<laughs> Welcome to Murph 2019. This is the Midwest Rapper Festival turned up to 11. In this video, we're going to check out some of the coolest 3D printer projects that I've ever seen. But first, thank you to Prusa Research for sponsoring this year's trip to Murph. Their SL1 is going to start shipping soon, and together with the CW1 cleaning and curing station, it's going to take the mess out of high detail resin printing. Check that out at the link below. But yeah, let's go. Carl, the White Knight. Are you the White Knight? Is this the White Knight? This is the White Knight. I'm Carl with Knack 3D Designs. And yes, this is my mad scientist creation, I guess you could say. Yeah, so it's it's a design we've seen before. It's kind of like the black belt, uh, the printer belt, all those 45 degree or 60 degree, depending on which machine you look at. But this is one of the nicer ones I've seen. So is, is this like a commercial product because it looks super polished? Uh, it's actually all open source. Um, this, we, we all joke, this is what happens when you let a car guy build a printer. Right. I, I, for me, I, I've always said, you know, cool looking and sexy cells, and I wasn't going to build something that didn't look as great as I thought it printed. Yeah, you, you got the color scheme down for sure. Uh, what, would, what do we have for specs? For specs, we're running a 400 by 430 by infinity for our belt axis, right. obviously. Um, running a Duet Y5 for the, the main board. It's running a Mosquito Hot End, Bontech BMG Extruder, LDO Steppers, Meanwell Power Supply. Yeah, the, the whole thing. Um, and I mean, size-wise, you can, in theory, do like as long as you want. Of course, at some point, you run into like logistical issues. Exactly. You've also got a palette on here, um, which is doing like the multicolor stuff right now. Correct. Yeah. Palette Pro. Yeah. And the, the idea is you can extend to Tool Changer, MMU, whatever you want to put on there. Correct, correct. We actually did leave in the, uh, the, the computer chassis here. There is room for expansion into a Duex should you want to go to a Tool Changer setup right. with future revisions to the carriage. You're using uh, the Black Belt software. How does that work with the 45 degree skewed? There goes print. Perfect. How does that? How does that entire tool chain work? That's all handled in the slicer. I, I actually don't understand entirely how they do it. I know at some point in the setup of the software, they're actually converting Y and Z because you know you want it to look like it's going on forever across the table, which would be on most printers Y, but on mine it's Z. So in somewhere in Cura, they're flopping Y and Z commands so you can see the print going off into infinity and yet it's telling it that's your Z axis. It took me a little bit just to get the whole concept behind how am I laying my filament to go that direction. So this is a hobby project for you. You mentioned that you wanted to build it way cheaper than a commercial machine that does this. Um, how much did you actually build this one for? Uh, right now I'm still under $2,000 with what I've got into this. And, and Obviously not in all the filament I wasted making pieces, but... Yeah, but that's development costs, right? together, yeah. Um, and you do have like an infinitely... Well, you have the uh, BuildTech loop on there, um, which is on, on a steel sheet. Is this thing going to be available as a kit or something sometime in the future? Uh, there's possibilities. I've got some people that have expressed interest in producing a kit, and as you said, it's all going to come down to what legal problems may or may not arise if someone tries to produce a kit. I was like, I know legally no one can say I can't make my own and do it for free and not sell it to anyone. What happens if someone tries to produce a kit? I guess we'll have to wait and see what the 3D printing community and other businesses say about it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a shame that, that so much is patented now, especially because 3D printing came from the expiration of a patent on, on like the core tech, and now everyone's just going to be like, oh yeah, this, by the way, this is mine, and this is mine, yes. and now we're left with machines that we can't build the way we want. Right. Uh, heated bed you got on there? I want to put out big props for Build Tech because they did go ahead and make me the largest Build Tech sheet they've ever produced just so I could build this. Right. It's, based, it's based off of a D-Bot originally. What cracks everybody up is this whole entire thing was developed in Microsoft 3D Builder. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay, but it's the only program I've learned so far. I know I need to learn Fusion. Yeah. 
But for that, it actually turned out spectacularly well. All right. Thank you for your time. Thanks no for sharing this off. Thank you. All right. Fill a dry. What, what, why do you bring a fish tank? Okay, so fill dry is actually an inline drying unit, and we wanted to show how good it can dry. So we put a filament spool in the water two and a half weeks ago, and just let it print through the fill dry. So you've got PLA in there. It's going through the fill dry, and it's printing. And the print is, as far as I can tell, looking really good. What, what do you have in there that's uh, getting the filament dry while it's being pulled through the machine or through the fill dry? We use uh, three tricks here. We have vacuuming, we have a heater, and we have some chemistry tricks we do to make it dr uh, get dry really fast, like in 15 to 20 seconds. You can print up to 250 millimeters a second, and it works perfectly. Um, and it works for PLA. You also mentioned it works for PTG. How about nylons or the more water-absorbent materials? We will work with any filament because we take care of the water, not the filament. Right. Water is the same anywhere. If the filament is still, in, is still a filament and it's good shape, it will work better than any chosen method, like baking or any other. Yeah, and I assume for PLA, it doesn't heat it up so far that the PLA starts to crystallize or deform, so it's all within reason. Yeah, it will keep your filament in great shape all the time. Uh, power use and cost, and where can I buy it? Well, you can go to www.filadry.com. It's 149 including shipping, anywhere in the world. And power draw, you mentioned it's, it's not quite as much as a printer, but it still uses some power because it's heat, right? Yeah, you'll have to, you will get a power unit of 12 volts and 3 amps to run it. It's included in the price. Cool product, thank you. Thank you. All right, Greg, what are E3D showing off this year? Is there anything new? We have, of course, the tool changer. Uh, this is a production prototype, so it's a beta machine that's been upgraded with all of the production upgrades. You're getting ready to ship these, right? Well, yes, we're looking at shipping in sort of uh, about mid-June, end of June time. Uh, we should be ready with them and we'll, we'll be pumping them out from there. Uh, assembling them all in-house, of course. Yeah, so that's, that's a big project for you guys. And you're also showing off a few new concepts for tools, right? We've got the drag knife just there. Uh, we have a USB microscope version as well, just to try and get people inspired as to what possibilities there are. These are the same sort of couplers as you have on your hot end tool heads? Of course, yeah, exactly the same plates. We're going to make these plates available so that you can build your own tools and whatever you want to do. So that's Tool Changer. What else? We have, we have, we have Bling here. Yeah, bling. yeah, there's a gold <laughs> hot end, the V6, which I'm sure you probably know about. Uh, we have the imminent uh, gold arrows coming out soon as well. Uh, and you have the new extra, extra long super mega volcano on there. Mega volcano on there with the 80 watt cartridge in there. Yeah, they're, they're, they're quite the, a lot of weight. The, these, are, these are some quite beefy boys here. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Any news from Do It 3D this year? Yeah, well, I suppose some of the news is that the Maestro, which we've obviously talked about before, is now available uh, through all of our distributors in the US, as well as in uh, as well as well in Europe. Yeah, and the, the Maestro is the, the cost down, the cheaper version of you do it, right? Yeah, so it's it's a, a lower lower cost board that's less expandable uh, than the main Duet, but for a lot of people running more normal uh, printers with less axes, it's completely fine for that. So yeah, we're starting to see a lot of uptake on that. Any news on, well, do it three or what? Actually, let's let's start it back. What has changed with Do It Two? I mean, the, that hardware has also been improving, right? Even though it's still called the same. Yeah, absolutely. So Do It Two has evolved. We're at like PCB revision, sort of 1.04 alpha, which sounds like a big mouthful, but we effectively uh, we've been making sort of small iterative changes. It still all runs the same firmware. You don't you don't have to use a different firmware, but we've added safety features. We've added more fuses and that kind of stuff. Just minor iterative, iterative change, changes to make it a better a better product, yeah. And the next big one, is that coming along? Or can, yeah. can we see new big features? Duet 3 is, um, it, it's a different board. It's, it's a lot of significant changes. I don't know whether you had a look at TCT. Um, we, we, had a, we had a kind of a concept there. We've developed that a bit further. But the main, the main thing is that we're a large amount more expandability on the Duet 3. The aim is to have a CAN bus where we can have lots of different expansion boards. So, I mean, we, talk, we haven't actually tested how many, but we're thinking 30 to 60 stepper channels, potentially. Wow. Um, and the other big thing is we're going to take the 
the communications and the user interface off the microprocessor and put it on a single board computer. So it'll be allow a lot more hackability for people who don't want to get into the microprocessor coding, but still want to be able to hack on the user interface or, or that kind of stuff. But there's no date on that yet, right? Um, we have a prototype now, which we, which we didn't have the last time we spoke. Um, we, we're doing internal testing on that. We, sometime next month, that's going to go out to a closed beta test some of our ROEMs and a few other people. And, and once that's progressed, I'll be able to give you a, a, a date. But we're hoping for middle of this year for, uh, for the main board of the Duet 3. Yeah. I mean, that, that's yeah. pretty quick. Yeah. All right. Cool. Good talking to you. Thanks for the info. Nice talking to you too, Tom. Cheers. All right, Luke. Uh, you're, you're noted here as rap rap enthusiast. And uh, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Uh, two unique machines, another one that, that we looks kind of similar to what we have, but these two are actually really interesting, and I missed you last year. Yeah. So let's do this. So what is what is this guy? This is pretty large, but pretty simple. It is simple, yeah. I try to keep it simple. It's a, it's a Tronxy X1, which a lot of people are familiar with. It's a very small printer. Not the greatest printer, but I basically just took a some open builds rail on the X and Y axis, made a laser cut base, and... Um, it seems to be working decently. So, yeah, and it's it's the, the funny thing is, I mean, it looks like you could make this bed as long as you want because it's just sitting on a, on a table, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, Open Build sells fifteen hundred millimeters. I just use the standard one meter pieces, but uh, you can go as long as your heart desires. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. And the the, I guess Y axis. What what's the orientation of this machine? Yeah, in the, the other axis. axis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's that's unsupported. How is that working? If I bump the table, is it going to show? It it might not show. Uh, well, it it probably will eventually, but it it works decently well. I finished this Thursday night because. Why not? But um, it, it does need a second Z support. So that's a that's a simple way to make large prints. This guy's a simple way to make really tiny prints. So yes. we can we can see the uh, the tiny benches. Before we move on, let me move the camera real quick. Yeah. So it, it it wouldn't have made sense to actually film that on the wide angle over there because this thing is tiny. What what are you using here? This is made out of these CD-ROM drives that you get from old computers. It has. I guess floppy drives are, are hard to come by these days. They sure are. Yeah. Definitely. But the whole thing uh, is very small. I might have the smallest build volume uh, printer at Murph right now. So, and um, Yeah, and, and also probably the cheapest one to build. Very possibly, yeah. At least the one here. Uh, it cost me less than 40 US dollars to actually put together. This is a computer power supply. And the good thing is it can get pretty much all the parts for, for really cheap. You've got a ramps in here with all the drivers. You've got a really simple extruder, cloned hot and all that. Uh, is it actually practical? Does it print reasonably well? Yes, it does actually, uh, surprisingly. I didn't think that it would. I, I thought I'd get a few blobs of filament here and there, but uh, the bench sheets I'm getting off and the uh, a few gears I've done are actually respectable, for, for especially for $40. So, uh, yeah, for, anyway, yeah, for sure. Eventually, I'm going to start trying to get uh, videos out on it and things like that. It's kind of hard to publish designs because they're non-standard, but uh, any help that I can give to uh, help people do things like that, I'll do it, so yeah. Uh, Making with Luke at YouTube. I'll try to link that somewhere in the video. Yeah, they, they don't do that anymore. Oh. Annotations are turned off on YouTube, unfortunately. All right, well, that looks dumb now. But anyway, so we'll make it work. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, thanks for letting me take a look at these. Awesome Thank stuff. You. Yep. <laughs> Dave, let me know. I've, I mean, I've been looking at meta hackers, and, and you guys are. I mean, you guys are selling machines. You guys have the Ultimakers, but you also have your own one. You have the Pulse. You also have software. It's, you know, it, it's like an entire universe of products that I've not <laughs> looked into. So, so let's get started. Let's get started with the Pulse. We can see that over there. It kind of looks like La Perusia. So, what, what is it? Sure. So, I mean, first we offer, just trying to be relevant in the space, offer everything we want, so or everything that customers want. So those are Ultimakers, Lulzbot, CME, CNC, a bunch of machines. We've actually started to onboard some of the much cheaper machines lately because that's what people were actually asking for. You guys have the Creality machines, right? Yeah, we offer Creality's. So even for a couple hundred bucks, we have Matter Hackers customers. We also offer first party products in the form of Pro Series filament which I think you've tried, Nylon X, Nylon G for more engineering grade stuff, but also MH Build, which is, you know, 20 bucks a spool. We try to be really practical about what we're affording. We're just trying to fill gaps of what people are looking for, and that's how Pulse was born. So we took a really robust open source platform, obviously the Prusa i3. We sold a bunch of Bond Techs and a bunch of Ruby nozzles already. So we kind of mashed them together and offered a platform where you can customize it and 
pay for the things you want and don't pay for the things you aren't interested in. And it really allows you to to have your own printer. We still assemble it, we calibrate it, it ships to you fully assembled and ready to go, and pairs with Matter Control. Yeah, so, so Matter Control. Matter Control is like the, the other big thing. It's it's a product you guys have and you're providing for free, right? And it it does so many things. Like, it's, <laughs> it's pretty fascinating. Ironically, Matter Hackers started as a matter control only company. Like that's the reason we opened our doors. Turns out free software doesn't keep the lights on, so enter filament and hardware and stuff. But yeah, we've developed matter control from day one. It's the CEO Lars's like passion project, really. So we continue to develop it. It's a great slicing engine. We really optimize for supports. And most recently, we have design tools where you can take blocks, primitives, and make your own designs or customize base designs. So take Thingiverse files, write your name on it. I think of uh, like my daughter's room light switch. I can throw her name right on it and a little giraffe, print it out, and you're good to go. Nice. So it's basically a slicer. It's Tinkercad. It's like your... It, it also does like printer. Uh, it, it's a host, basically, right? You, you plug your printer into it and Matter Control controls it? Yep. So it'll host it and there's why, there's mattercontrol.sync.com is like a remote, so you can be anywhere in the world and do it from your phone. A lot of like really hidden features. <laughs> Sounds sweet. All right, thanks for your time. Thanks, Tom. All right, Russ, your, your booth is one of the, the most colorful, most lit up ones at, at the show. Uh, this design, we actually know, that is your design, right? Yes. Yeah. I released that about two years ago and it just took off like hotcakes. Yeah. Instant classic. Uh, you're also bringing this, this spire, this RGB spire. What is, what is that about? Uh, that's one of three that I created for a competition in Grand Rapids called Art Prize. Um, I created a giant printer so I was able to print that all in one piece. I didn't want to have to do it in sections. Yeah, so that there's three spires to it, all of them? It was designed from this piece over here. This is the original inspiration, and they create the meetup, and then it separates into three parts. That is nice, how they fit together. All right, so should we take a look at the printer you brought? Because I think that that is just as, as interesting and as amazing and as unique as, <laughs> as your art pieces. So that's your machine. That, that is what you print those spires on, and it is... It is quite something. <laughs> yeah, I came here last year and I talked to Sanjay and asked him about cable drives. He said he didn't really study them you know, to any great effect, but he get, asked me for my email and then he sent me a link to a Stanford professor that has a YouTube video with his lecture series on cable drives. So by that, I was then able to refine my uh, Core XY drive here with these adjustable, ca these adjustable pulleys. So. So the I guess that the core idea is you have you don't have a frame per se. It's all like functional parts. You're riding on these Z rails, and it doesn't use belts. It all uses the, the same sort of uh, fishing line that uh, the hang printer, for example, uses. Yes, definitely. Um, I was inspired by the hang printer. I was inspired by the MPCNC uh, printer as well for using the three quarter inch conduit, which is a twenty dollar frame instead of extruded aluminum at two hundred or more, and it's and to be a proof of concept. If I couldn't do it without. Um, with this, I don't think I could then do it with V-Rails either, you know. So I thought, well, let's try this first. I could do it with V-Rails, it would have been a little easier, but it was fun learning a lot about cable drives. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's a great concept because it's just, it's so simple. You don't need any specialized parts, right? Not really. I bought them in a lot of the big box stores, um, like Menards for the uh, conduit, which is readily available for electricity stuff. Uh, the cabling is Spectra Fishing Line, 300 pound test, rep rep stuff, just cheap ramps board, Raspberry Pi, you know, just improvise, adapt, overcome. My brother's a Marine, so it's like, just sort of like, all right, let's see what I can do and make it work. It's certainly not the, high, the highest detail or highest precision 3D printer, um, but it, it doesn't have to be, right? Not at all. It's, it had a single purpose in mind in the beginning so I could make my art prize piece. Um, allowed me to print big parts somewhat fast. That large piece that I created over there is, uh, took 17 hours to print, 0.8 millimeter layer height. A lot of people always ask. It's a uh, volcano clone hot end, pushing a one millimeter nozzle at uh, 0.8 millimeter layer height and then 1.5 millimeter width. Um, so you're, you're pushing quite a bit of material through this? Quite a bit of material. I built the Core XY drive to be light. I didn't need to. It's only moving at 16 millimeters per second. You know, and I'm printing in base mode, so I don't need, you know, any retraction. 
I had to get it done for this exhibit, this art prize. I mean, there's no uh, end stops for X and Y. So then also with the, the Z lift, there's no, because of the weight of the frame, you have to manually reset it. So you push it down to reset and then lift it with the weight of one, just one finger. Just a standard like 42 or 48 ounce NEMA 17 is lifting this whole printing frame. Absolutely fantastic machine. Uh, what's the saying? Unique problems require unique solutions. Uh, <laughs> great to see this. Thanks for bringing it along. Thank you. Thank you for all you, that you do on uh, YouTube and exposing people to rep rap and the whole 3D printing movement. It's great inspiration. Hey, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just as enthusiastic about this stuff as you are. And it carries over to everyone else as well. So my attitude is gratitude. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, <laughs>